Today we're going to be learning about long multiplication. Now long multiplication is something that lots of people worry about, but it's not too bad after you've had some practice. We're going to begin by looking at multiplying a two-digit number by a one-digit number. In this case, 23 times 4. Looking in the units column, you have 3 times 4. And the answer to that is 12. The units part of the 12, the 2, goes in the units column. The 10 part of the 12 goes above the tens column, above the big T, and will be used later on. You may see people carry numbers in slightly different ways, but the method is much the same. If you've used a different method for carrying in the past, then carry on using the method that you're more comfortable with. For the next part of the question, you are looking at the 4 multiplied by 20, which looks like a 2 in the tens column. The answer is 80, which appears as an 8 in the tens column. But you also have the 1 that you carried from the previous part of the question. This is brought down and added to the answer in the tens column. So the 8 in the tens column becomes a 9. It's a good idea to cross out any of the carried numbers once you've used them, to stop you getting confused in more difficult questions. The question is now finished and the answer is 92. Here's another question. 32 times 5. If you're feeling confident, please stop this recording and try the question yourself before we continue. Firstly, look at the two numbers in the units column. 2 times 5. The answer to this is 10. The 0 goes in the units column. The 10 is carried into the tens column above the t to be used later. Next, look at the 3 in the tens column and the 5 in the units column. The answer to this is 15, although because you are using 30 rather than 3, the true answer is 150. The 5 goes into the tens column. The 1 goes above the h in the hundreds column. But you also need to add the 1, which is above the t in the tens column, to the 5, making 6. For the final part of the question, you need to add the 1, which is above the h in the hundreds column, to the other numbers in the hundreds column. As there are no other numbers in the hundreds column, the answer is 1, or 100 as it's in the hundreds column. The question is finished, and the answer is 160. Here are three more questions. Stop the video now, and try to answer the questions for yourself. Let's see how you got on. Here are the answers to the three questions. Let's try a new question. In this question, you will need to multiply a two-digit number by another two-digit number. 43 multiplied by 76. Look at the units column. Multiply 3 by 6. The answer is 18. The 8 goes in the units column, and the 10 goes above the t in the tens column. Next, look at the 4 in the tens column, and the 6 in the units column. Multiplied together, these come to 24. The 4 goes in the tens column, and the 2 of the 20 goes into the hundreds column, above the h. But you also need to add the 1 above the t in the tens column to the 4 in the tens column, making 5. Because the 2 in the hundreds column is the only number there, the answer is 2, or 200 as it's in the hundreds column. Next, because you are working with multiples of 10, there will be no units in this section. Therefore, you will need to put a 0 in the units column. This will always be the case with these type of questions. Look at the 7 in the tens column, and the 3 in the units column. Multiplied together, this comes to 21. The 1 goes in the tens column, and the 2 joins another crossed out 2 above the hundreds column. This is why it's a good idea to cross out carried numbers once they've been used. Now look at the 4 and the 7 in the tens column. Multiplied together, this comes to 28. The 8 goes into the hundreds column. The 20 part of the 28 goes into the thousands column. However, because you need to add the 2 in the hundreds column that's above the h, the answer is in fact 30. 
So zero will go into the hundreds column, while a three will travel into the thousands column. In the final section, you need to add up the two numbers you have just made. You can do this using column addition. Eight plus zero is eight. Five plus one is six. Two plus zero is two. And there is only the three in the thousands column. So the answer is 3,000. The question is complete, and the answer is 3,268. Here is a similar question. 31 times 92. Look in the units column. You have 1 times 2, the answer of which is 2. Next, look at the 3 in the tens column and the 2 in the units column. Multiplied together, the answer is 6. This goes into the tens column. Once again, you will need to put a 0 in the units column of the next section. Then, look at the 9 in the tens column and the 1 in the units column. Multiplied together, this is 9. Next, look in the tens column. You have 3 times 9. The answer is 27. The 7 part goes into the hundreds column. The 20 part of the 27 goes above the thousands column and appears as a 2. Because there is nothing else in the thousands column, this 2 is brought down as the answer for the thousands column. In the final part of the question, add up your two new answers by column addition. 2 plus 0 is 2. 6 plus 9 is 15 with the 5 in the tens column and the 1 going underneath the hundreds column. Next, add 7 plus 1 equals 8. Then, in the thousands column, the only thing that's in there is a 2, so the answer is 2,000. The final answer is 2,852. Here are three similar questions. Stop the video and see if you can do them by yourself. And here are the answers. If you've made a mistake, go back and see if you can spot what you've done wrong. If you got them all correct, well done you!